This is Capital Games Movie Club. I am the Wiz, and I'm Kim Shackman. Kimmy, how you been? How you been? Busy. I've been traveling a lot. Oh I've wow! Been a little MIA. Yeah, I I, uh, I found that you uh, went to my, one of my old stopping grounds. You went to Texas in the past week. Yep, first time I've ever been there. Yeah, how, how was it? We saw a really pitiful cattle run. The stockyards in where did we go? Fort Worth, Texas. It, I felt really bad for those cattle, cows, whatever you want to call them. Oh, wow. They looked very sad. But it was cool to be there and experience it. And the weather was actually terrible. It was like the same as New Hampshire. It was cold. Oh, really? That's, yeah. that's actually... Uh, around this time when I was there, it was starting to pick up to the 80s and 90s around that time. Yeah, and then, it was um, cold, rainy. Yeah, but like... The the one thing I dealt with in Texas, like it, every year I was there, was by the time May ran around, it was like a hundred degrees every day. So I was like, ugh. Oh yeah. But uh, yeah. Okay. Well, speaking of farms, see that segue? Uh, oh, look at that. Yeah, there we go. You're so clever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's about time someone noticed. Um, <laughs> We are reviewing the 1989, 1989, good lord, the 1989 uh, baseball film Field of Dreams. Star- I was four years old. <laughs> wow, I was, I, came out. I was seven, okay. <laughs> uh, starring uh, Kevin Costner, James Earl Jones, and Ray Liotta, directed by Phil Alden Robinson. Well, can we also jump in and just acknowledge that this was one of the requests we got? I think her name was Maggie, right? The, uh, the, the person that um, the person that uh, sent us the uh, the suggestion was Morgan. Morgan, yeah. I knew it started with an M. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Morgan. Uh, basically, uh, this is one of the movies that Morgan wanted to watch. Uh, uh, basically, I think that the letter basically said that uh, I wanted to see this, so here you go. You guys see it. I'm like, okay. Yeah, like you guys review it first, and then I'll decide if I want to watch it or not. <laughs> she gave us like a, a couple of or a few um, names of baseball movies because at the time it was opening weekend for baseball. So that's why hmm. we did this. So I just want to acknowledge that. So thank you, Morgan, for giving right. us your list. Yes, Morgan, thank you. <sighs> thank you, Morgan. <laughs> Let's get into the review of Feel the Dreams, starring Kevin Costner, James Earl Jones, and Ray Liotta. I came in knowing exactly what this was going to be, because uh, the I'm aware of the people who love this movie, and I'm aware of the people who are criti- who criticize this movie to death. And when was the last time you saw this? I have never seen it. Oh, this was your first time watching yes, it? this is my oh, first time Oh, I did not know that. I seen it years ago. I was probably like, I don't know, see, 12, 10. Yeah. Like, see, the thing is, I am not a fan of sports movies. And it's not because I'm not a fan of sports. I do like sports. But sports movies are so formulaic and do the same things over and over again or go through the same types of uh, things over and over again that... It's kind of hard for me to be excited for a sports movie, and because I of that, see that, and because of that, sports movies to me become some of the most overrated movies that uh, are ever talked about. Like, uh, and I think this is one of them. Oh, God, there, like, there's a there's a podcast that I uh, I frequent called the the Bill Simmons podcast, and but his main thing is sports, but. He talks about like the best movies ever made, and a lot of them are sports movies. And I don't get like I, I, I will say this right off the bat, <laughs> right off the bat. Um, I think. <laughs> oh Bol- God, please don't. Go um, ahead. I did it on accident. Stop it. <laughs> okay. I think in terms of baseball movies, Bull Durham is better. Moneyball is better. I think there are better baseball movies, but if there is a movie, if this movie, I love that movie. Hmm. League of Their Own. Yes, a League of well, that's softball, but I guess we'll count that. Eh, whatever. But um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have had no sleep. I'm a bastard this morning. Uh, <laughs> if there is a movie that that romanticizes a sport more, it's Field of Dreams, because I think that's like the basic thing I got out of this is that they 
there is like a romantic feeling about this movie, about the sport specifically, mm-hmm. that this movie has. I, I feel, and some may disagree, but I feel that if you don't have those same feelings to a certain extent for baseball, right. you're not going to enjoy this movie at all. Or you're just going to be left with kind of like a meh taste in your mouth, you know? Like, I, Well... Yeah. There is, I don't know. I mean, the the thing I felt uh, after ending this movie was one: this movie is corny as hell. Like, yes, it is, yes, it is corny. So corny! <laughs> oh my god, you nailed that. But on top of that, because I, I do like baseball and I do have some memories of playing baseball when I was young, mm-hmm. I do understand the feeling that comes with baseball and everything it just doesn't articulate it for people who aren't fans of baseball that's i think the 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 big issue that i have with this because yes it romanticizes uh the the baseball uh specifically from the olden days or or fathers passing on their love of baseball to their children well it's like the all-american game you know what i mean like Yes, and this movie also presupposes that this will always be the great American game. But unfortunately, that hasn't been the case for the past 10 to 20 years. Right, yeah. So uh, for, I would say, a younger generation that gets like that gets introduced to this movie, I think they would look at this and go, who the hell cares? It's baseball. They would hate it. They'd be like, this is dumb. This is a yeah. waste of time. Like, yeah. Because they don't understand. They... It, it wasn't their time. Right. What other sports movies... Uh, I, what we just asked... What other sports... This is probably what I should have asked before we started. Oh, one of my favorite sports movies is uh, Remember the Titans. That is a good sports movie. I yeah. like that movie. Mm-hmm. It's because it's not just about sports. Yeah. No, that is true. And some of the best... I think some of the best movies about sports do that, really. Uh, I, I'm going to piggyback off of what you said, too. Uh, One of my favorite uh, films that is a sports movie that is uh, narrative-based is Rush. I I don't know. I've never seen that. It's with Chris Hemsworth. It is about F1. I like him. It's about F1 racers. He plays (gasps) a role. Oh, I need to watch that. This is a great movie, and it and it is crazy what they do in this movie. It is really good. Because I like. I mean, I'm kind of like a bandwagon fan when it comes to F1, but. My husband went to F1 racing last year in Austin and he's like all about it. And like we watched like the TV series and it's very interesting. Me the one racing. So if our audience has never, you know, seen a race before, definitely check it out. It's it's just like a whole different element. To oh, racing. yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, I've seen uh, some some of it. It's pretty crazy. But my favorite sports movie of all time is Hoop Dreams. And I've this is. It's a it's a it's a three hour documentary about two kids who the the filmmakers follow from high school about them trying to get into the NBA. Oh. It is, uh, but it, it talks about a bunch of socioeconomic things uh, about uh, their struggle with poverty, things like that. It, it is actually an amazing documentary. It is what is it called again? Hoop Dreams. Right, yeah, that it is a fantastic documentary on that. Mm-hmm. But um, they have been trying to make that into a, a feature uh, or a, a a narrative feature for a while, which I hope mm-hmm. they don't do. It, it w- I just wouldn't work. I don't think it would work. But but uh, okay, so we got into what our, I think are uh, for a baseline what our favorite sports movies are. Mm-hmm. I think the other thing we need to talk about is Kevin Costner. And Kevin Costner has a a niche when it comes to sports movies. He's done many of them. Let to, uh, it's so funny. You're like, oh, you know, talking about your sports movies. Which is, I'm like, you know, when someone puts you on, on the spot, I'm like, oh, God, I don't even know. <laughs> I didn't even realize he did a lot of sports movies. Oh, my God. He has. He's done... All I, I think of him right now is Yellowstone, because that's what I've been watching. Yeah, a lot of, I, a lot of people seem to like that movie, uh, that, that series. I have to give it a shot. Let me go through the sports movies he's done so far, okay? okay. He has done Feel the Dreams. He has done Draft Day. Uh, he plays an agent, I think, in that one. I haven't seen oh. it. I haven't heard great things, but I haven't seen it. Bull Durham, which is, I think, a, a really good movie. I think, it, it, honestly, Watch Bull Durham. 
that's that's a good movie. It has a uh, uh, Susan Sarandon in it as well. Oh, I like her. Uh, for Love of the Game, where he played a pitcher, he did Tin Cup. That was yep, another was one. Tin Cup that. was a, Tin Cup was good, but the I never seen it, but I heard good things about it. Yeah, Tin Cup's good. So the, the the thing with him, I think why he does these types of movies is that he I think he once was a an athlete. I don't know if, if this is one. Of, I think this is a, his story is that Kevin Costner. I, I think he wanted to be an athlete. It didn't work out. And then he got into filmmaking and his big break was supposed to be the movie The Big Chill. Did you know about this movie? No, no. OK. The big, the big Chill is a very good movie, but it has a really good soundtrack. But basically, what happened is that they filmed his scenes, The Big Chill, mm-hmm. and then in the last minute, the director changed the script to where his character actually dies in the beginning of the movie. Oh my goodness! So they cut everything out of his of his film, yeah. and then they, and then they shot the film as if his character died, which actually for the film worked really well, but. That was supposed to be his big not break. Not Costner, though. <laughs> yeah, oh, no, not, not at all. But that was supposed to be his big break, and it didn't work out for him. But, you know, he became one of the biggest stars in the 80s and 90s after that. So mm-hmm. he, he turned out very well. L- let's just get the performances. The only performance I actually saw, I liked was James Earl Jones. In this. I was just going to say that. Right. And I, I think it's because he's the only one who's, like, kind of calling out to the, the main character's bullshit a little bit like are you nuts like, yeah yeah like and it's just like i think too it's just also like his character and how it like his characters how the writing was for his character right like he's supposed to be that guy that's like pushing back you know the other thing too with james earl jones and and, and this might also be because i haven't seen many films of his but it is easy to forget that he was actually a really good actor at, at one point because his most notable roles are all voice acting roles i think a lot of people forget that uh, i might i have a i, I do i forget about right. it right because when you think james earl jones you think mufasa from the lion king and you mm-hmm. think darth vader that's who you th- that's what you right, think right. of james earl jones or if you're on cnn the voice of cnn or his voice is his voice is really what makes him it's very distinctive but he's actually a, a, a very good actor. He did another movie uh, with Robert Duvall, I think in the 90s. I forget what it's called. I think it's called A Family Affair that he was actually very good in. Seeing him in this movie is like, oh, wow, I forgot he's actually a pretty damn good actor. He's given a decent character here. On the other hand, it feels like that character specifically and his performance specifically is part of another movie that is just transplanted into this one. To a certain extent, it's kind of like yeah, I agree with you on that. It's kind of like he <laughs> there's he he ended up and he took a wrong turn. He was an outsider coming in yeah. to the film. <laughs> yeah, he, he took a wrong turn and ended up on ended up in Field of Dreams. I'm like, yeah, yeah. What, what am I doing here? <laughs> but, but I like his performance, but it is kind of weird in this movie, really. Uh, I, I but I'm not saying that like. Oh, well, okay. Maybe I kind of am. But I'm I, I'm trying not to say that, like, there's a different class of performance or, or performance artists or actors. Mm-hmm. But it, it kind of is, in a way. Because I look at James Earl Jones and go, oh, wow, that's some good acting. And they look at Kevin Costner and go, that's Kevin yeah. Costner. <laughs> yeah. I don't, again, it's like, I also think, like you said, like, you have to really value baseball and the actual love of the game to like really even i mean i don't know i guess that doesn't really matter what the acting but like you can fall in love with the acting if you've already fallen in love with the game i think and for me i was just i don't love baseball as much Mm. as most people so it it just felt like kevin costner just kind of fell flat to me i was just like "Eh." he's reading his lines you know it's well, no, I mean, it's clear in the movie that Kevin Costner's character does love baseball. And it is believable, too. But it's also believable because Kevin Costner loves baseball. I mean, that's a well-known fact. That is just who he is. He just loves he loves sports and he loves baseball. That's why he does so many baseball movies, for God's sake. But, but in this, like, 
I wouldn't say he's uh, sleepwalking through the film, but he definitely. I felt like he was. I personally <sighs> felt like he was. Like I was just kind of like, eh. I mean, it's just it's like almost like too romanticized. Like it's just like going through the motions almost is how I felt with his acting. He, but he is charming in this role. I mean, and, and I gotta give him that amount of credit. It's not like is he though? Like I didn't. Think he I was. think okay. But Maybe I, a smidge. Hey, well, okay. Hey, you wanted you wanted me to argue my point. I'm arguing. No, that's just, fine. That's fine. I just felt like it was like la- like last time we watched Million Dollar Arm. Yes. I felt like John Hamm was charming. Kevin Costner, I just felt like was I don't even know how to explain it. He almost like wide eyed and dreamy within his acting, and I and like I don't care for that. But like, that's kind of like. Eh. That's kind of a character, though. I, I, it is, and maybe that's just like not what I enjoy. Right. So I was kind of like, eh, that's just like my opinion. I I would say, uh, okay, maybe in this performance because you're not a big fan of baseball, I don't think it would have. I I think you may. I, I hate to say this, you probably won't get where the performance is coming from to a certain yeah extent. maybe, yes, maybe that that's a what good it way is. to say it i think so yeah but I, I will defend kevin costner as an actor and say watch bull durham and uh, bull durham oh, no i do enjoy kevin costner as an actor just not in this film okay okay that's fine okay i'm ray trying Liotta. did ray Liotta do much in this really? not really um ray Liotta's fine. i feel like he was just like a he was the introduction to everything that started right and i don't yeah. want to give anything away because I, I know we have spoilers but it's the introduction in the movie to how everything started and i think he did a pretty good job with that with like the small amount of lines and like time that he was given like i yeah. think it, he like made it seem i guess magical if you will sure i mean hmm, see that's I, I don't know about that i i i looked at ray liotta in this film and felt that uh, for a number of reasons, he kind of felt out of place. Like I didn't buy him as a baseball player specifically, especially oh, she I was just. I think the way he looks, he looks like an all-American baseball player. Like like the minute he steps onto the onto the field in this movie, like he's got like that young face and like the short short hair, and like he looks like a I don't know. I was like, but again, like I'm not super into baseball, yeah. so. Maybe Neither that's just me being a bandwagon fan. I'm like, that's oh, fine. I don't know. He looks like a baseball player to me. <laughs> I mean, okay, I'm not a, I'm not a huge baseball fan either. But a, a lot of the mannerisms, the, his, like a lot of the things that he, he, he acted in, just didn't feel right. I like Ray Liotta as an actor. Don't get me wrong, but right. I, I just, I didn't buy him in this role. I guess the one performance I want to give a, a little bit of a shout out, and that's because I actually really like this actor, is Burt Lancaster. He played uh, Doctor Moonlight Graham, mm-hmm. the the old the old doctor. Yep. Ah, yep. uh, when I saw, I didn't realize he was in this, and when I saw Burt Lancaster, oh my god, Burt Lancaster! What in else this? does he do? What else? A, a lot of old movies. Uh, uh-huh. I did a review of The Leopard about a few months ago, which he was really good in. Uh, he also did the movie uh, Sweet Smell of Success. He's really good in that as well. Lots of older movies. Lots of older yeah, movies. Yeah, I haven't seen too many older movies, so that's maybe why I just don't really know of him. Yeah. Um, very, if you see him as he's younger, very handsome. But he he's one of these actors who really envelopes himself into the characters. And Sweet Smell of Success is one of those where he's actually really good in it. Oh. I want to criticize Amy Madigan, but I think this is more about the character than it is about her. So I, I kind of want to give her a pass. When it comes to, I thought she was okay. I mean, I didn't. I, I mean, I, I thought the acting was fine. I, I mean, think that's it didn't blow I, me away. But I think that's fair. Yeah. Uh, I just, I think I'm more annoyed by the character than I am about her. But uh, that's fine or anything. But yeah, I get that's that's really what performance is. Nothing really. Except for James Earl Jones, who I just felt was in, like, the wrong movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so funny you say that. Because the minute you said that, I was like, yep, he's, like, the only one for acting that, like, really stood out to me. And, like, and yeah, it's almost like he was, like, transplanted into the movie. It was weird. Performances are, are fine. I think, I think I'll just give them, like, they're fine. But uh, I, I will say that your feelings on Costner, yeah, I think if yeah. you are not... 
really into baseball, I, I can understand why you would be like, yeah, I don't really like his. Like, I was just kind of like this guy, so like wide-eyed and like dreamy about this and about baseball, and I, I'm not, so it, I just right. can't relate. Well, yeah. uh, again, that's the character that that's right, right. That, that the character is, but I think the performance isn't in depth enough for somebody who isn't into baseball can't find a way to buy in to Kevin Costner's character. Right. If you're not into it, then you don't understand why he's going through all these hoops. Right. And it, it, he just seems nutty, <laughs> I guess is the... Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's exactly it. But, but yeah, I guess like separating that out, if that is what they were going for with the writing, then I, I guess he did nail it as an actor, right? Because uh, that's how I felt. Like, well, I was like, well, he's kind of like wide-eyed and dreamy about all of the baseball items. And Well, let's get into writing then, since we're, we're, okay, he- yeah, we're we'll heading into, into that. that. My my biggest problem is what they did with, with Ray Kinsella, which is Kevin Costner's character, which uh, it, they set up the fact that he didn't have much of a relationship with his dad or that the relationship he had was one of feeling pity for the the, the father mm-hmm. and the only thing we learn about him is that he decided to be a farmer and, and he's he not, started a family That's- yes and he's not happy where, where his life is but he really likes baseball this might be something along the lines of this is around the time this is made around the times it was made but I think in a more in-depth movie, it would be a, a case of arrested development more than anything else. Then it is about a guy who's just romanticizing baseball and how great it is and what it meant to him. Mm-hmm. Because all I got from the film is that he is obsessed about baseball. That's that's fine to a certain extent. When you're supposed to feel for this character and root for this character and I want him to succeed in what he's doing it's kind of hard for me to actually do that when he's doing a lot of things where I would really question yes. exactly why he's doing why this stuff. why right like why and like I guess they try to tie it back to like his father maybe but it's it's not enough sure. like I'm, I'm kind of like Ugh. you need some kind of depth right about the father and, and why he feels that way and what happened with uh, the relationship with the father, which they don't get into in this movie. No, they really don't. Like, they barely touch upon it. But I think that's the, the, the purpose of the film. It's supposed to be very romanticized because he even says throughout the film, my dad turned into a shell of himself. He, right. he did this he and that. Like, and that spontaneous, that. like, yeah. So, something of that nature, he, along those lines, he said. Yeah. By the end of the movie... It, nothing really nothing really is resolved emotionally but just the story goes through its paces essentially yes, that's exactly it and that's that was a turn off to me the other thing with the writing is i don't mind amy madigan's performance but i did not like the character of annie at all <laughs> i i just was like I, I don't like how the character of amy uh, amy of annie is written i don't mind amy madigan's performance but the things that the character does for the husband in this really makes They're me not question. practical. No, not at all. Not at all. And we'll get into it in spoilers, but it's not practical at all. Like, not realistic, not practical. And and again, like you mentioned, like maybe they were, it was just like the time, like in the 80s, where mm-hmm. they, that's where they came up with her character and like how she should be with her husband. But... I immediately felt that, and there's one scene, and we'll talk about it in spoilers, but she's in a, in a school. Yes. I don't know if you remember that. That's, yes. like, the only time where it's, like, she, like, stood up for herself, or stood up for others, and kind of showed that she was, like, a little bit more powerful, you know? And it's just, like, I don't know, it's weird. Everything seems a little two-dimensional, and it requires you to understand why pe- these people love baseball outside of the film it, it really requires you to say oh you understand what it's like to love baseball right okay here's a movie but if you're someone who isn't in love with it or it requires more to get inside the characters it does not provide that depth 
it is the writing like in the storyline like it actually really confused me like i think i was looking for more depth and it wasn't there no that's that's fair i i agree with you i i I feel that same way too directing is pretty pedestrian yeah i'm I'm trying to even think of something in the the direction that i think would would i could stand out as good or bad but like i i can't think of anything like and the directions director like is Bill Alden Robinson? Yes. He's still working, but I mean this is his most popular film. But yeah, Feel the Dream Sneakers, Freedom Song and the Sum of All Fears, the He hasn't done too much for directing. He's no, done he... more writing, it looks like. Uh, he does a, a bit of T V as well as a writer, mm-hmm. but yeah. N- nothing more with that. I mean, do you want to get right into spoilers? There's really not much to go yeah. on. Yeah, yeah, I mean I don't know. Directing was bland to me. I I agree, actually. I agree. Okay, so let's get into spoilers for Feel the Dreams. If you haven't seen it, you should stop, come back when you're ready. We'll get into spoilers in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right, Kim, let her rip. (laughs) Okay, I know. I was like holding back. I'm like, I don't want to tell anything too soon. So we were, I was talking earlier about, what's her name again? Annie in the film? Annie, yes. Yeah. So the wife, this guy. So at the beginning of the movie, obviously this guy's like hearing voices in his freaking cornfield. And Mm -hmm. she is like, at first she kind of thinks he's crazy, but she doesn't really think much of it. And then he's like, no, I'm going to build a baseball field and like, you know, taking all their money out of savings and, you know, they own a farm. So it's, you know, farming is tough as it is. And he builds this giant baseball field with these big lights and so they can play at night and da 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 And he has no reason to be doing this whatsoever but a voice in his head. And she's just letting him do it. Like, no concern? <laughs> no, like, like... whatsoever. And they have he... a child. Like, they have a daughter. And I was like, I would never let my husband do that, ever. I'd be like, no, you're crazy. I need to send you to some psychiatric care. Like, there is a problem here. No, I, I, I 100% agree. <laughs> like, I, what I, the hell? I, but, like, a part of you is like, okay, I'll buy in for now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. See. I was like, all right, let's see where this goes. Like, where, where are we going with this? And then, like, tell me, like, what, like, I was like, when I first saw this when I was younger, I think I was, like, I don't know, a teenager or something. Years ago, I saw this movie. Okay. And... I felt the same way about it then as I do now watching it as an adult. Mm -hmm. So I need to hear your feedback on like the ending of this movie and even throughout like, are they in heaven? Like what is going, like I don't get it. I don't even, I don't even think it's that in depth. Okay. I don't don't even. Like am I missing something? I don't, I don't think so. I don't think it's that in depth. I think it, I want to joke and say that it's actually a government psyop where they put, <laughs> spread chemicals in the farm <laughs> that are causing these people to see mass delusions, <laughs> and they are, and somehow Ray Kinsella is going to be able to be more business savvy enough to make money out of this. I, I think that's what's going on. You know what I mean? Like, I don't get it. Like, I don't get it. Like, I'm like, okay, so is it just supposed to be like, he loves baseball? Because because even in the movie, James Earl Jones is talking to him at one point, and he says, I left, I you know, I my dad used to ma- basically, like, make him play baseball as a kid. Because mm-hmm. as a kid, he didn't like baseball. Yeah. He said he stopped playing at age 14. And then he left town at age... 17 and like didn't speak to his dad ever again and then his dad died but it's like so does he really love baseball or does he just love the fact that his dad loved baseball and that's the problem with the writing (laughs) yeah like i'm like this is so confusing and then like with that character you can see a a through line where he may have uh, grown up to love baseball after his dad died or as he separated from his dad as, as something to remember from where he was and at. And that's how I'm taking it because that's how what I think, but, but I don't know. But there's no attachment there. There's nothing right, there right. that that is cemented there to make you feel, oh, that's why. Oh, that's so... Yeah, that's, yeah. like it doesn't really explain the reasoning behind it like you said at the beginning of this review, mm. but I'm like... So then at the end, too, like, he meets his dad as a younger person. Mm-hmm. And then he's, like, calling him by name as he introduces him to his daughter and the wife. 
And then he's like, hey, dad, you want to have a catch? And I'm like, so does he know that it's his dad? Like, I was so confused. Oh, no, he knows. That he, he, no, Ray knows it's his dad. No, I mean, uh, the other way around. Oh, did, his that that's his son. Know that that's his son? Yeah. <sighs> Again, I don't think it's even that in depth. I think like, this I'm like, was, I don't know. Like, I don't get this part. Th- like, this is the, okay, but this is the part that a lot of people who love this movie say that affects them the most. It's mostly men who are like, oh, God, that scene, I I don't cry in movies, but that scene makes me cry. Because what you hear from from most men who watch this movie and love this movie is... It reminds me of when I would ask my dad to play catch with me in the backyard. I was going to say, yeah, it's like a, like, a it, guy it's thing. Like, it's yeah. like, oh my God, like, I, it, it brings me back to there. Oh my God. And, and again, as a what, like, I can't relate to that. Like, I just, right. I, I, yeah. The, but the movie does not set that up for you if you're not relating to that. Like, if it doesn't, if you don't have that built-in memory in your bank that sa- that says, oh wait, this reminds me of, oh my god like then it's not there for you and it's just not gonna be there like my problem too is it's like i think the movie like makes me mad like it frustrates me i'm like okay i'm like why isn't this more in depth like they could set it up where it could be like listen to me like getting my voice is getting angrier and angrier (laughs) as i talk about this they need to distinguish if they're in heaven or not like just somebody tell me are they in heaven are they not like you're, here's the thing, Kim. Okay, and I'm I'm not saying this to insult you. <laughs> I'm mad. really not. I'm really not. So when I say this, don't take this the wrong way. It's fine. You're thinking too hard about this. I am. I am. <laughs> Which I is was some... when I watched it the set. Like this is my second time watching this movie, and I'm just like, this movie sucks. Like I need to know what happened. Which, like... t- to be fair, a lot of people say this about me. <laughs> so, because <laughs> no. so, they're like, it's a movie, dude. Stop. I'm like, no, no, you don't understand the the depth and the and the and the way the and the I uh, what, uh, as a the, like no. it could have been so much more than what it was, and 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 like I, we were saying. So before we started recording this review, Wiz and I were talking. It was like either people really love this movie and it is a popular movie. Mm-hmm. But then I said to him, I said, I don't understand why. Why is it so popular? Like, like, and I'm not talking like just for the men that love baseball and blah, blah, blah. But, it, but, but, it, it, but that's exactly what it is. But it is a bit like if somebody says like, oh, what are some really popular like baseball movies? Like Fields of Dreams is always on that list. For right. anybody, like not right. just men, and I don't understand why. But you also have to understand too. Uh, but uh, this is coming from a complete movie snob, so take okay. this with a grain of salt. It takes much less for people who are sports film fans to enjoy a sports film than any other type of film. It really is because all you have to do, you have to have some sort of feeling or something that that somebody can identify with that will remind them of when they played Little League or when they were in high school sports or when they were in college. sports are so popular. Right, that too. And it's so ingrained in our society that writers can be lazy about the sports movies and the audience can still get attached to it and still like the movie. I've told you that I have adults, adults, who think Rookie of the Year, Little Giants, and there's another sports kid, and the, and the Mighty Ducks are legitimately some of their favorite movies of all time. To this day, they're 40 years old. To this day, <laughs> okay. I wouldn't say that they like so. Like, I never saw Little Giants. Okay. Rookie of the Year, I thought was comical. I, I wouldn't say yeah. it's the best movie of all time. It's fine. Yeah, like, I think it's funny. And then um, Mighty Ducks, like. I love that movie. Like, I, it's not my favorite movie, but I love it from my childhood as well. But, but again, I would never say it's like the best movie of all right. time. But you're also asking, like, uh, okay, this <laughs> sounds so terrible when I say this. You know what it is? I just don't understand the story. The story, basically, to to me, basically is about a guy. Okay. Who? Okay. <laughs> Give me a minute. Um, <laughs> I had something and I lost it. <laughs> You're just too like shocked by my rage right now. No, I've been there. <laughs> Who are you talking to? Really? Yeah, this is true. This is true. <laughs> I I find it refreshing that you just... <laughs> Um no, the the story from what I can glean from it is okay. about a guy. Okay. 
who basically is growing up and doesn't like the fact that he is growing up and wants to go back to a simpler time. But while going through this simpler time, he realizes that things weren't so simple in the first place and that he has complicated feelings regarding his dad. Now, okay. if this were a smart movie, if this was a movie that wanted to get more in depth with the character and want to get more into, like I say, in depth with the character, you would put more emphasis on his relationship with his dad, his complicated feelings with that, uh, with that specifically, than with this whole mystery of what the voice is saying. The, to me, but this also would have been kind of standard as well. To me, the voice would have been something in his psyche saying that he had to reconcile something that happened with his dad. Right. But that's not what the movie did. The movie turned it into, I would hate to say this, but a quasi Scooby-Doo mystery. Annoyance. As to what, what it's this, annoyance. <laughs> what this voice is trying to do, is trying right. to tell him to do. And it just doesn't work practically but again if you are if you are in love with baseball if you're in love with sports i can see why someone can look past it and go oh but it, it's um, it's just or let's say the old line it's just a movie <laughs> it's just a movie oh you're telling me that because i'm angry yeah no 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 i'm not saying no i'm saying that because there are going to be some people who are going to yeah, listen to that, this yeah. and go you're you're taking this movie a little too seriously. Well, then, like, yeah, I, and I am, I think, because like, no, like, but because because uh, maybe because like I didn't like the writing so much that I was trying to make it into something better. Because I'm like, okay, like, yeah. So then, at the end of the movie, who's he talking? He's talking to his dad. I forget who he's talking. He's talking to somebody, and he says, "Oh, the dad says, is this heaven?" And he right. says, he says, "No, this is Iowa," like he said at the beginning too. Right. And then he, then the dad, I think the dad says something else, and then he goes, it could be heaven. So I'm like, are they all dead? Like, what's happening? No, 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 no. I, I really do I not I was reading think... too much into it, because I wanted there to be more. That's, but that's perfectly fine. Okay. <laughs> like, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna insult I'm you. Mad at, I'm oh, mad oh, at, oh. um, I'm mad at Kinsella, is that his name? Dude, Ray Kinsella. Dude, writing. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, yeah. oh God. <laughs> um, okay, I mean, look, some movies can really benefit from having more depth into this, but this movie specifically needed it because without it... It's confusing. I, 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 wonder, I thought okay. it was confusing. Like, why, I did you find it confu why did you find it confusing? Because this whole ask. time I was like, who's dead and who's not? That was my question, like, okay. especially at the end. I okay. <laughs> I, like I could tell, like who's like, uh, like, and then like they had James Earl Jones go into the field. They're like, "Come with us," and I'm like, "So did he die? Like, what happened? Was he already dead?" I'm, I'm, t look, uh, like, like I said to you, <laughs> and you know what? I'm not insulting you. But, but do you understand what I'm like as yes. an outsider coming? Like, yes, like, what? Like, I, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. <laughs> okay, good. Within about. 30 minutes of the film, I just said to my, turn your brain off, Wiz. Just turn your brain off. <laughs> <laughs> this, okay, good. So I'm and, not, all right. Yeah. Some movies, you just got to do that. <laughs> just, go, just go with it. <laughs> but but th in this specific movie, I understand why you would go there and go, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa what's going on? Right. Wait, like, I didn't understand. Dead? Are yeah. we in heaven? What's going on? Right. Huh? Like, like I, I do understand that to a certain extent. Like, I, I, I really do. This movie would have benefited from more depth. Uh, in, in, with the writing and the characters, with everything in this. So I have but, another question for you. Sorry to derail. derail but so, you know, when the doc, right, he meets the doc mm -hmm. in Minnesota and he's older mm -hmm. and then they pick him up on the side of the road and he's younger mm -hmm. and then they bring him back to the field and he's playing and then he steps off the field to help the little girl because she choked or whatever mm -hmm. but then he can't go back like i don't understand that like, doc was already dead okay i knew he was already dead when he met him but like 
So how did how did he meet meet him at the younger? Okay, I, I don't know. I'm stop really thinking. I know. I need to stop. <laughs> so, I need to stop here, right okay. there. Here's the problem with the <laughs> film. Here's the big problem with the film. The minute you start thinking about <laughs> certain aspects of it, this, a lot starts to fall apart. Yeah. <laughs> like what? How did Kevin Costner travel through time? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, <What>? Stupid <laughs> shit like that. I'm like, what? Like. But no, one of the scenes I really liked with Annie was when she's in the school and she's telling off that lady. I liked that scene. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's basically just basically a scene to give a- Amy Madigan. Yeah, it's just to give her like more, I guess, right. in the if movie. The, uh, and if this like, they could have probably cut that out. If this movie was made today, this would be a much bigger scene, and Amy Madigan's yeah. character would probably be. Well, I think Amy Madigan's character would be a lot different, but. Yeah, yeah. Um, he wouldn't have a baseball field. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't. Um, About to lose their house, and he's like, "Oh, she's like, oh yeah, go ahead, go to Boston, spend all our money that we have yeah, left." What the hell? <laughs> oh yeah, and then you need to go to Minnesota. Go ahead, go ahead. I'll just deal with all these people at my house just about to evict us. No problem. There's two things that like really uh, bothered me, and one surprised me, one bothered me. What surprised me is that the field was made within 10 minutes of the movie. <laughs> I thought, I, my thought was, okay. Like, how'd they get all this equipment in there and the lights and the electricity? I thought by the the middle of Act 2, the, fil- the field would be made. And then there would be more drama involving the, the wife and, and stuff like that. Going, Are you crazy? Like Didn't more it, like, I thought there would be yeah. much more pushback than that. But there wasn't. Right. It was just like, oh, you want to make a field? Voices in your head? I don't think. Okay, yeah. sure. <laughs> Whatever you want, honey. Like what? what? Well, like, I wouldn't go that far. I, I, I think. I, I think crazy. it was more along the lines of men being men. Am I right? Like yeah, like what? I'm not. Like, I'm not. I'm. Lo- this is a losing battle, even though it's like the biggest thing, like big deal for yeah. farmers to lose their crops. Like it's more like it, it seemed like more like to me with the wife is like, you know, men love baseball, so I yeah. guess I'm like. Huh? <laughs> I don't really want to deal with arguing, so just go ahead and do it. Yeah, like, pretty much. But she was very too much agreeable for that type of for well, that. Well, then too, um, like at the beginning of the movie, they talk about how they're kind of like they were hippies. So she's kind of like, not that that has like too much to like, do, like be, but I think she's just like, oh, my, it's gonna make my husband happy, like peace, love, and happiness. Just go ahead. Like, were they hippies? Or were they just liberal? I don't. It made it sound like they were hippies in the. 60s at the beginning of the movie, but they didn't like go deep into it. So yeah, I don't know. yeah. So that was one thing I was surprised by. The thing that bothered me at the end of the movie is that the clear villain of the movie is the most is the one with the, the brother. Yeah, is, is the one that ha- is like the one the I agree with the most. Guy, like the most realistic. Like, yes. And then and, he's like, you're bringing your daughter into this, like, making her psycho. Yeah. <laughs> and then he, like, drops her on the ground. <laughs> oh, oh, God, I love that. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> like, and then they're just like, this guy just, like, basically, like, I mean, without words, like, this guy just, like, dropped my kid on the ground. He's crazy. And, you know, he and, wants us to sell. And it's like, well, yeah, like, you have no money. And the ensuing trauma of him throwing the child and making yeah. her choke to death. <laughs> Finally made him see the ghost sitter on the diamond. Yeah! Like, what? Like, what the <laughs> hell? Like he's like, when did these baseball players get here? And I'm just like, what? Like, why? Like why? Exactly. Why? What? And, and the answer <laughs> is Kim. We don't, don't know. think about it. Yeah. <laughs> don't think about it. <laughs> if you think about it, it ruins it. So yeah. if, <laughs> the, but just we keep romanticizing. I, that's what the movie wants. That's what, uh, like, honestly, that's like what it. this movie wants. <laughs> that's fine. That is fine. That's what the movie wants, though. It doesn't want you to think about it. It wants you to envelope itself into its world and into the story it's weaving. And it wants you to feel emotion regarding about the romanticism the about dad. people who love baseball. Yeah. That's what it is. That's what okay. the movie is entirely about. It's like the story doesn't doesn't matter. It doesn't. It really doesn't. But it, what it is about, essentially, is these. this man loves baseball, 
and he loves his dad, it'd be nice if I see my dad again. Yeah. Essentially is what this is. <laughs> and what I don't get was like, oh, oh man, don't sell the farm. We'll, we'll make a killing. Like, with what mass delusion? What are yeah. you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> and then at the end, all the cars are coming at night. I'm like, but the baseball players went to heaven again. They're gone. <laughs> Who's coming to watch him play with his dad? Like, <laughs> This is why I say, <laughs> don't think about it. That was my first thought at the end of the movie. I'm like, why are all these people coming? There's nobody here right now. And are they going to be able to see them? Yeah, like, <laughs> again. Don't... Or do they need to drop the daughter on the ground again for somebody to be able to see them? Yeah. <laughs> you know what to do, honey. <laughs> okay, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, though. I'm like, what? This is so stupid. Yeah. Oh, um, some Anyways. thoughts I had when I was watching the movie. What would be a good porn title for this for the porn title for this i have field of creams is that good (laughs) you're like since i can't think about it let me like while i'm watching the movie since i can't think too much into it let me think right and and throughout the entire film i was like so how would field of creams work oh i see how this would work the actress would be in the field and she would hear the voice if you suck it it will come and she's like, oh what is this voice telling me? <sighs> I don't understand. Well, you probably do it, darling, since you love baseball so much. Ricky, I don't oh. understand what the voice... What is the voice telling you, darling? Yeah, it's just If like, I suck it, it will come. Yeah, it's... I have an idea. <laughs> and then he walks out in, like, half of a baseball uniform. Like, no shirt, just the pants and the bat. <laughs> no, 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 you got it all wrong. The, the baseball uniform with a shirt and no pants. You, oh, okay. <laughs> obviously, you don't watch your porn like you should to. You should, Kim, but... <laughs> They're just going to get right at it. Yeah, exactly. Batter up. <laughs> <laughs> That's the sequel. <laughs> <laughs> oh you have me, like, rolling right now. This is uh, great. This is such a great review. Field uh, of Dreams, yeah. All the more entertaining than this movie. But anyway. I think Field of Creams would get a better rating from oh me than God, this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. Oh, good Lord. Okay. Uh, anyway. Anything more you want to go in the spoilers? <laughs> or do do we want to go into a three-part review on the, <laughs> no, the, I po- think the porn good. possibilities? Okay. <laughs> okay, go into your final thoughts, Kim. What do you think of the movie? Um, My final thoughts is it is like a romanticized movie, as you said. You need to be a diehard like, baseball fan and or relate this to your childhood throwing a baseball with your dad, whatever. If you are maybe a female that didn't do that or anyone that wasn't really like into sports at a young age, this movie is not going to make even any sense to you if you try to actually think about it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) As you said, it's just, this movie does nothing for me. It really doesn't. Like I just, it fell flat. It was bland. James Earl Jones was awesome. I thought he was great in it. And I wouldn't recommend this movie to people. I just wouldn't. Mm. It's not... I would give it a two. I would give it a two-star two rating. Yeah. I okay. Just, it does nothing for me. Like, I'll never watch this movie again. I'm but a two as well. I'm going to echo a lot of things you said. It is very romanticized. It's not realistic at all. And as long as you are okay with that, I can see some people who, again, like you said who are into sports, who are into baseball, who, ha- who have that attachment already, mm-hmm. really enjoying this movie. But if you are not that type of person, it is really hard for me to recommend, like you said, it's really like hard for- yeah. to recommend this to someone who already, who does not already have an attachment to sports and specifically baseball in this. So uh, it, it, re- it really requires you to have that love before you watch the movie, which I would have to say at the time, in 89, there must have been a lot of people who still had that attachment. Well, also, Be- like you said, like, also the generations, right? Like, Sure. It is a very, it is surprisingly old school in a, in a sense as well. But it is surprisingly old school. Uh, when it, it does feel like a 30s, 40s, 50s movie. Something that I would expect, like, uh, I don't know. Well, the husband and wife dynamic is what does it for me for that. Yes. 
I, I would agree with that. I, I'm gonna give it two stars. So uh, why did you give it two instead of like a one? Personally, yeah. I do have an attachment to baseball. I do like baseball. I still watch baseball. I actually do fantasy baseball. I I and I oh. one of the games I play all year is a baseball game. I I do like baseball. I did not know this about you, Wiz. <laughs> there is a lot you don't know about me, Kim. <laughs> That's actually not true. There's a lot you know about me, but um, but the thing is, I but I recognize that that attachment is what keeps me from hating this movie, because I do understand where it's coming from, and I do understand exactly what it's trying to do. Right. And a part of me wants to give it a better rating because it does succeed with what it's doing no 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 but no. on the other hand there's this there's but yeah you you're right to say no because there's also this part of me that's like but the story makes no sense the Zero characters sense. are r ridiculous the whole story is kind of at is out of whack like there are just aspects of this film where i i do sit there and going what now <laughs> it's like, what? yeah what but yeah it's just yeah but yeah, like it's a two. It's a firm two. <laughs> uh, uh, you know what? I will. I will couch it this way. I'm giving it a two. If you are a baseball fan and you are you romanticize baseball and you love sports, it's a four. If you're not, it's a one. I'll I'll put it that way. I know too many people who love this movie, and, and of course they're not. I feel like the whole world loves this movie. I like, think there's so get... many people I've talked to that are just like, oh, I love that movie, Field of Dreams. It's like, they, and they like Kevin Costner. Those, I'm like, why, why? I think honestly, if you would, this is a movie I would like to sit a bunch of kids who are sports fans, yeah, who are from the like ages today. of 18 to 25 today, have them sit down and go, what'd you think? And they go, that is corny as shit. <laughs> oh my <laughs> like... god, we should like find some kids. Ooh, we should do a review with like a few kids to be like, "Hey, did you watch this movie?" And like some clips of us interviewing them—that'd be hilarious. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't think they would want a forty-year-old coming up to, "Hey, kids, you want to watch a movie?" Well, no, like online, not like creepy. Right, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you creep. You just made it weird. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> you said this is field of dreams. This is field of creams. What is this? <laughs> Pay no attention. They're like, red. <laughs> like, personally, it's a two. If you are not a fan of baseball, have no attachment to it, it's a one. If you do, I, I mean, if you really do, it's a four, is what I would I would say it as. To this oh, point. yeah, I could see that I, for, like, hardcore baseball lovers, especially those that grew up in that time. Right. But, uh, but I, I come across this a lot, too, with people who love certain movies that I just can't stand. And I have to explain them in a certain way that I, I watch a lot of movies. So I, yes, I, you know. Okay, yeah. <laughs> but I'm saying that because essentially, I because I see a lot of movies, I see the same things over and over and over again. Right. So I I see the the same types of writing and same types of characters done to death. For the some, sports movies too, specifically. It sports like. movies are terrible with this. Like there are, it it, it actually shocks me when a, I like a sports movie. Like that that's how much it's surprise. Like that's how much it's like. Oh god, that, the writing is usually bad in sports right. movies. But with this specifically, you're you're asking a group of people who love sports to watch a movie, and what's the best way for them to watch a movie? Something that they're into. Where are they into sports? Right. And they're not going to care about character depth or they're not going to care about writing. Right. They're going to care about what enforces their love of what they love. Sports movies, if someone gets attached to it, it, it could be the corniest shit. Really, it could be the corniest <laughs> shit. You will find that there are fans who will uh, adore a, a, a sports movie, even though it's terrible. There, there's... Let me tell you a story before we get to the next movie that we're going to okay. review. Yeah, tell me. When I used to, I, I used to work at a bank and uh, I was part of management and the management had a meeting and the meeting was in a movie theater one time and uh -huh. the market manager. Kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> the market manager thought that will be a great idea for the the, the the meeting was that uh, we do our things that we have to do and then we all watch a movie together 
and we oh like some team bonding yes <laughs> <laughs> and the movie he did was seven days in utopia never seen it don't <laughs> just oh, don't okay it piss this movie pisses me off for so many reasons not only because i had to hold my tongue throughout the entire damn film say you were probably like my co-workers are gonna go crazy no 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 the, the, okay i'll tell you what happened after uh, as well but this movie is so bad <laughs> it is so terrible and it I just it, looked it up. I'm like, what is this even about? This movie is a, is about a golfer whose car breaks down and ends up in this remote <laughs> town. Oh my god! All right, after disastrous debut on the pro circuit, a young golfer finds himself unexpectedly stranded in Utopia, mm -hmm. Tex Utopia, Texas, and welcomed by an eccentric, eccentric rancher. Yes, played by Robert Duvall. That sounds so stupid. It is incredibly <laughs> stupid. But the, the thing that, uh, but the the thing, the movie is very into Christian beliefs. Oh. So it's a lot of you know, God saved me. The word of the Bible is the best. Like one of those types of movies, which this from isn't time a to true time. Story is it? Hmm. This isn't like a true story no, or anything. No, is it? Okay, no, good. no. It's a ripoff of Tender Mercies, <laughs> to be completely honest. But it was really couched in religious Christian beliefs. And from time to time, those movies end up being pretty good. But this one was bad. This one was really bad. Hmm. And the ending of the movie is especially terrible. What happens is at the end of the movie, he gets out of the town. He goes on the pro tour again. And he's uh, he is killing it in this tournament. At the end of the movie, he's about to. It's the the last putt of the the uh, the, the tournament, and it's this and it's the standard cliche. He has to make this putt, or else he's not going to win. He's done. Yep. Yep. And then he hits the ball, and then the movie stops. And then uh, some voiceover happens with Robert, Robert Duvall's character. And then it goes, if you want to see what happens, go to da 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 to what? find out. Yep. Is it like a Christian site? Yep. <laughs> oh, my God. That is like, number one, that is like terrible marketing. Oh, number God. Number two, that is like, that's almost like, oh, I don't, I hate right. that. That is awful. And he... And that's that's the end of the movie. Like you, you don't find out what happens. Like, I'm like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> I have to watch like, this shitty you, movie for. Which, if you don't find out what happens, I've seen movies like that a lot. But like, you don't put a website at the end. Uh, but that's exactly what it did. And I went to the website once, and they sold Bibles. The they porno. sold Christian paraphernalia. <laughs> they sold, uh, I think, the book that this is based off of. Oh, that's like terrible. it was like. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> I was like, what, what the hell? That is <laughs> like, the weirdest thing. But I had to hold that in because that was the market manager's favorite movie. <laughs> so I, oh, if, if you went, to, uh, the, the funny thing Jesus. about me and Kim is, even though we've been friends for about 25 years, we've never met in person. Yep, this uh, is true. true. Yeah. So you've never been to a movie with me. Nope. I now refuse to go on dates to movie theaters because of how bad it makes me look. <laughs> oh because, because if I don't like now, a movie, like I really want to go to a movie with you in person just to see how you act. Yeah, <laughs> if I don't like the movie, I am generally like, oh god. Like you don't have a good poker face. No, I am. <laughs> I mean, I'm a terrible liar too. Like if something is like really like like what, I have this facial expression like. Huh? Like what, what the fuck? What? what? The hell? Yeah. And I had to hold all of that in throughout this movie. And it is oh one of the God. worst movies I've ever seen. And then like after the movie where they like, "Oh, did you like it?" and you're like, "Yeah, it was great." <laughs> and you went home and you were like, "What the fuck?" So here's what happened at the end uh after this. Yes, oh, a lot God. of people had to say, "Oh yeah, that was great, man. Oh, that was awesome." It turned out he got a bunch of complaints because a lot of Christian, the Christian exactly. element to it. There were a lot of people oh. who were Hindu, Muslim. They went to like, HR. Jew. It, it's exactly what happened. They, they went to HR, wow. and basically they, what they got from it. And to a point, I understand why What's they got them? this. Yeah. Well, but here's what I, I, this is what I was told. Apparently, the complaint was that they felt was, oh, 
in order to be a good worker and to be good at your job, you have to be Christian. And yeah. on the here's the thing: on the one hand, I will hear that and go, mm, "That's kind of you're pushing it." On the other hand, the movie made no sense for what he was trying to use it for. Oh, so what else so could what they, they got think? Out of it, yeah. Like, what else like, could you yeah. think on that? Exactly. So I was like, I was like okay. <laughs> like, okay, I understand why they're feeling this way. Right. So, yeah, two stars for Feel the Dreams. <laughs> <laughs> and zero stars for whatever the hell that other movie was. Oh, my God. Movie. Seven Days in Utopia. <laughs> if you really want to see an, a really corny movie that is just terrible for many reasons. If you love God, go watch it. <laughs> It'll make you be an atheist as soon as you can. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs>